Hello there, and welcome to another Data Masker Head Scratcher. My name is Chris Unwin, and I'm a solution engineer with Redgate. Now, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about deterministic data masking. Now, in 95% of cases, everything that we have discussed so far with Data Masker in this series has been random and it has been static. However, there are going to be a few small cases that pop up occasionally where you need to ensure that data is always consistently masked to the same value. I've set up an example of this today, just such an occasion. So you join me here in SQL Server Management Studio, and I have got a couple of databases here that uh, are located on just a testing instance available on my machine. I have the Mapping DB, and I have the Mask Me Please database. Unsurprisingly, we're going to be masking the Mask Me Please database. Now, in this theoretical setup, this is the copy of the database that I need to mask, and it has two tables on it that both need masking. The AD creds and scary PHI table as well. Now, interestingly and very straightforward, it's going to be very easy for us to mask the scary PHI table. As you can see on here, we have, I've just populated this with some example data from Data Masker, and you can see we've got some first names, last names, date of birth, health notes, etc., that we need to mask. Now, you all know that we don't mind how this data gets masked. It just needs to be realistic. So we're going to use straight up normal substitution rules, um, potentially row internal rules, search replace rules, whatever. The normal data masker rules for masking these fields. So this isn't going to be the problem that we're dealing with. The problem that we're going to be dealing with, though, is perhaps we have hypothetical scenario where we have to ensure that values always remain consistently masked. A good example of this might be credentials. If you're pulling down a copy of the database and you store access credentials in one of those tables, well, we always need to make sure that they get the same value. Otherwise, people may not be able to access the database in dev and test. In this hypothetical scenario, I already have some values in this AD mapping table. Now, the AD mapping table is effectively where I take the names of people that I have beforehand. So Chris Unwin, Suki St. James, Chanand Lebon. Uh, and then we have our names after and password after. So these are the prod values for names. And then we have our dev and test values for access and passwords. Now, for the sake of today, I'm just using plain text passwords so that you can easily see how they change. But of course, in practice, we would hash these, encrypt them, do whatever it is we like to them. But effectively, I have the prod name that needs to be changed, and we need to ensure that we provide the after name and the after password for access once moving forwards. So if we take a look at the mask me please database and we look at the Active Directory creds, you will notice that now, because this is a fresh copy of the database that we've pulled down, you can see that we have our before names, which map directly across to those names before. And we also have our selection of incredibly strong plain text passwords. Arsenal 11, Dragon, and Password 1234. Now, what we need is, based on this name value, we already know what values we want to put into that table. We have the name after and the password after that need to come into this table. So how are we going to do this with Data Masker? How are we going to ensure that every single time we mask a copy of the database afresh, Chris Unwin becomes Jordan Van Hoosier. Well, let's jump into Data Masker and find out. Now, interestingly, if we take a look at the Data Masker rules that I've set up, you'll notice that I have two controllers. 
Now there's a section in the documentation that deals with controllers, but effectively all we're doing is just creating another connection with Data Masker. As you can see here, we just have this add controller button at the bottom, and that's going to allow us to add another connection to a different database on the same instance. Now it's kind of important that we have this mapping database because we always need to have some kind of ability to map to the values we want. We want something that lets us know, hey, these are the new values. Now you'll have noticed in the mapping table, I only included the name before and not the password before. And this is because I'm trying to include as little sensitive information on that mapping table as possible. If we could do it on ID, that would be even better. We then have another controller down here, 02, and that's for the mask me please database. So the one that's going to be masked. Now the rules that I've actually put in on the mask me please controller are just the basic rules that we would expect to see. We have our first name and our last name and date of birth being masked here. So just a regular substitution rule. And also we have a search replace rule to do the health notes on the scary PHI table. So actually everything in the mask me please controller is just related to masking that particular PHI table. Everything that happens with the deterministic data masking, that all happens up here in the first controller. Now, if we were always going to control the values in that mapping table and we have some way of updating it automatically or including those values ourselves, and the mapping table will always include every instance of the values we might find in our database to mask, then actually you only need one very simple rule. And that is a table to table rule in this controller. And all we're doing is saying from our AD mapping table on the mapping database, what we need to do is take the name and password after and synchronize them into the name and password columns on AD creds in mask me please. And all we're using is the actual join columns themselves. So we've got name before on AD mapping and then name on the target. So we're updating the name that we're using for the join. Now, across a lot of data, this will be slow. If you have many, many thousands, potentially tens, dozens, hundreds of thousands of rows that you need to mask deterministically, it will be slower. So generally, we recommend this approach for smaller sets of data, such as my uh, AD access uh, names and password. Now, if occasionally when you pull down a copy of the database, there might be some values in there that don't exist in our mapping table. Well, if we are synchronizing back over, of course, we're going to miss that information and we still need it to be masked. So what I've done is I've included this set of three commands at the beginning of the uh, controller. In fact, the trigger manager. And we've made them dependent on the trigger manager as a it absolutely must happen before the table to table rule runs. We have a command rule. Now, this command rule is effectively just an insert into statement. So we are taking everything and putting it into the AD mapping table. So we're updating our AD mapping table. Anything from mask me please AD creds that does not exist in the mapping. So if we add a name to our uh, production AD table and we forget to update that in our mapping table, what it will do is copy those values into our mapping table. Just leave that up a bit so you can see my SQL. And there we go. So next, the next step we've got is a dependent row internal rule. And the row internal rule is effectively just masking the name after. So we've just copied in the name before values and we're going to give it a brand new first name dot last name. So effectively using the DMS parameters here in the row internal rule to create a name, something like Chris dot Unwin, but effectively 
different. Now, interestingly, the where clause on this particular rule is where name after is null. Now, this is because where we've inserted the name before into the mapping table, the name after and password after fields are going to be null. So what we need is to only mask the values where they don't already have a name after and password after. Exactly the same happens in the next row internal rule. And unsurprisingly, this one is creating us a password, of course, which can be overwritten if you so choose. But this one is just creating us a password of a couple of random dictionary words and a random integer as well. Same where clause except slightly different with the password after. So where password after is null, generate a new password after. Now, if we just go ahead and uh, make a change to the table. So we've got our mapping table uh, over here on the left. So we've got our names before, and then we've got names after, password after, and we've got the sensitive set of information on our mask me please database. Let's go ahead and add a new value in there. Let's say that we've added a value in our production system. So let's go with uh, one of my favorite people in the world, uh, Kendra Little. Kendra joins the company and has that access to our databases, but we forget to update the mapping table to give Kendra access. And Kendra, being an actual IT professional, unlike myself, has a strong password. So we'll say, you know, various capital letters and pass uh, exclamation mark word 456. So a nice strong password from Kendra there. Cool. So we have a nice strong password. We have Kendra and Kendra does not exist in our mapping table. So let's walk through this masking set piece by piece. So the first thing is the command rule. What this is going to do is jump on up to our database. And if we refresh our mapping table, you'll see that we now have Kendra Little in our mapping table. Excellent. The next step will run that row internal rule just in isolation. And that's going to give Kendra a, an after login name. So re-execute. And Kendra is now going to be uh, amalasanda.recendes. And we actually need to give Kendra a password as well. So we run that next rule. And a password should have been generated. There we go. Overstimulated, uh, diminutively, dim diminutively uh, 39. I can't even speak today. So now we've updated the mapping table. And of course, now we do the table to table rule, run the rule. OK. And we should find that in our mask me please database, we've now masked all of those values, Jordan Van Hoosier, Burgundy Schaffner, Ayanna uh, Peninci. So we have all of the values that have been updated in line with their name before, which is now gone. And the name after has indeed been populated, as has the password. So that's all been updated. And we can run this particular controller as many times as we like. If we add, say, one more value to the AD creds table, let's again add one more person. So another one of my uh, absolutely favorite, uh, favorite professionals as well. Uh, we'll go with, um, in fact, no, we'll, I, I pick Grant a lot of the time. And so let's go with uh, Steve Jones as well, the voice of the DBA. So we've put Steve Jones in there and we'll say, that Steve doesn't have a, uh, a very strong password, the voice of the DBA. There we go. And I can now rerun this. I can run this controller again if I would like, and that will run all three steps together. And if we now re-execute, you'll notice the mapping table has been populated. And oh, <laughs> because I've run it again, it's actually uh, populated us with the before names as well. My bad, should have definitely uh, altered that. But in any case, you'll notice that Steve Jones has been mapped to Alva Ramirez and actually has a uh, brevity twisted password. And if we refresh, you'll notice that Steve has become Alva Ramirez brevity vested 63 as well. So it has been mapped across. So what went wrong there? Well, interestingly, because we had 
all of these values uh, existing where we had masked them in, they had been copied across into our mapping table, given a new map, and then masked back in. So you can easily add a piece of uh, just an extra um, clause to the T-SQL that we write in our command rule to ignore the names if they exist in name after as well. That's fine, just add it to the where clause. Um, and also, if we're only using this each time we import a copy of the database, well, then it's only going to run through once anyway. But the point is, in any case, we have the ability to ensure that every value is masked and where possible, every value is masked consistently. And of course, we can just go ahead and also double check that our PHI masking rule works as well. So scary PHI table where we have uh, uh, Henriqua and Pura and Honoria. And we'll just go ahead and run our regular rules. And these will be different every single time. These do not need to be consistent. So we can just mask and now we have Alice and Theodora, Amanda. We can mask those differently every time. They'll still be useful for dev and test. But of course, the things that we care about, the Active Directory or whatever other credentials we have to mask, well, those are always going to be masked in the same way. And just a quick recap, the way we did that was a command rule where we insert into our mapping table any values uh, over on this mapping DB from our mask me please database. So how would this work in practice? We would persist the mapping DB on an instance where we're preparing our database. And then each time we need to prepare the database, we either use this particular um, instance for our, um, we either use this particular instance for our, uh, our imaging process, or we restore a copy of our database to that instance, do other preparation steps, swap out permissions, TDE, whatever it is. And then what we can do is copy the values across where any are missing, synchronize new mask values back into the database and mask any other PII or PHI tables that we may have to mask. And that way we create this continuous cycle so that we are always able to update our credentials. People are always able to update, to, uh, always able to access the non-production copies of our database. And of course, uh, all of the PII PHI is still being masked the same, statically, randomly. So that is how you can implement deterministic data masking with Data Masker for SQL Server from Redgate. If you want to check out any more resources, do also check out the Redgate Hub and Redgate University for all other learning videos on Data Masker. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much for stopping by.